morning. My name is Manikesh Kumar Jha. I'm working as an assistant professor in electronics and communication engineering department at IMT College of Engineering, Greater Noida. So today we are going to discuss about the topic basic of Laplace transform. So there is a wide range of Laplace transform is there and their applications. So main applications of Laplace transform to solving the differential equations. In mathematics, when we are solving the differential equations, there we are using the Laplace transform. The application of Laplace transform also used in the network theory. So when we are solving the network theorems or network theory questions, in that questions we are applying the Laplace transform. Similar as in control system domain, when we are solving the state space analysis, in that state space we are also applying the Laplace transform. So there are the large large area where the Laplace transform applications are used. So today we will see what is Laplace transform. What are the properties of the Laplace transform? How we find the inverse Laplace transform? And what is this Laplace transform? So today we will discuss about this. So the next one. First, we are going to discuss about what is Laplace transform. So the Laplace transform is an integral transformation of a function f of t from the time domain into the complex frequency domain given as f of s. So basically, the Laplace transform is nothing but the transformation from time domain to the complex frequency domain. So time domain function, when we are defining the functions in time domain, we are represented as f of t. So this is function of time. Similarly, when we are going to define it is uh, the function in complex frequency domain, we are represented as f of s. So s is nothing but the complex frequency. So s is the complex frequency, which is, which is given as sigma plus u omega, where sigma is the attenuation factors and omega is your angular frequency. So basically Laplace transform is the transform from the time domain to the complex frequency domain. So here when we see that this is the L of ft, means this is Laplace of our function f of t in time domain. Then when we are taking the Laplace transform in domain at time domain, so in complex frequency domain, the Laplace transform of ft is given as f of s. So this is the Laplace domain, f of s. So it is represented as how we find it. So we can find it by integration. So how, what is the formula? So integration from zero to infinity, function in time domain, that is f of t, e to the power minus s t dt. So this is the formula to finding the Laplace transform in the time domain. Here already I discussed that s is the complex frequency. Here we see the integration, we are going to integrate it from the zero to infinity. So this is known as one-sided or unilateral. So this is, we are going to taking only the positive side of time. So this is the unilateral or one-sided Laplace transform. If we are taking the integration from minus infinite to plus infinite, so we are going to integrate within the time from minus infinite to plus infinite means we are taking the negative value of time as well as taking the positive value of time. So we are taking the range of time from minus infinite to plus infinite, then it is known as bilateral Laplace transform or two-sided Laplace transform. So now we are going to take some examples. So in the first example, we are seeing that the first signal is u of t. This is the unit step signal. The next one signal we are going to take is e to the power minus a t u t. This is the decaying exponential. So this is the decaying exponential signal. And third one we are going to take is as del of t. That is the impulse signal. So three signals we are going to take. Now we will discuss about what will be the Laplace transform for this thing. So one by one we will discuss how we find the Laplace transform and what will be the Laplace transform for this unit step signals, decaying exponential signals, as well as the impulse signal. So first we are going to take is the U of T, the unit step signals. So as we already know that the, when we are going to discuss about the unit step signals, so the unit step signals is defined as when t is greater than or equals to 0, the value of ut is 1. When t is less than 0, the value of ut is 0, as you already know. So when we are going to take is the Laplace transform, so Laplace transform of ut is f of s. So this is a complex frequency domain, so this is represented as f of s. How we find it? Integration 0 to infinity. When we are taking the time from 0 to infinity, so we know when time is positive from 0 to infinity, the value of ut is 1. So we are taking 1 into e to the power minus st dt. 
So when we are going to integrate these signals, we are getting one upon s. So the Laplace transform of unit step signal is we are getting one upon s. Similarly, the next function we are going to take as the decaying exponential signal. So when we are taking the decaying exponential, so what is the decaying exponential? e to the power minus at into u of t. So this signal is also multiplied with u of t. When any signal is multiplied with unit step signals, it means that signal will be defined only for the positive time. Means it will define from zero to infinity. Then what will be the effect, sir? If we are taking the negative time, then for the negative time minus infinite to zero, it is getting zero. Because for the negative time, unit step signal can't define and it will give you the value as zero. So when we are taking the Laplace transform f of s, so it is getting zero to infinity, e to the power minus at, and this is the Laplace domain when we are finding the Laplace transform, so it is multiplied with e to the power minus st into dt. So when we are going to integrate it, as we know that when we are going to multiply the two functions or two signals, the power getting added. So how much we are getting e to the power minus s plus a into t dt. When we are going to integrate from 0 to infinity, we are getting 1 upon s plus a. So from this we understand the Laplace transform of e to the power minus a t u t is 1 upon s plus a. This a is same as this a. So this a and this a both are the same. So next one is your ramp impulse signal. So when we are going to take the impulse signal, so impulse signal we know that impulse signal is defined as at t equals to 0 only. So when we are taking time t equals to 0, impulse signal has some value. So it will define that t equals to 0. If we are taking the other value, other value means other value of time rather than 0. We are taking any value other than 0. It means 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 1, 2, 3, 4, any value. The value of the impulse signal is 0. So this is the impulse signal property or we are defining the impulse signal in this manner. So when we are going to take the Laplace transform, so this is f of s. So f of s, how much we are getting? Integration 0 to infinity. Del of t, that is the impulse signal. e to the power minus s t dt. As I already tell you, that impulse signal defined only at t equals to 0. So it is only defined at t equals to 0. So it means e to the power minus s t at t equals to 0. When we are putting t equals to 0, so e to the power, min e to the power minus 0 is how much we are getting? 1. So we know anything to the power 0, we are getting 1. So the impulse signal, when we are taking the impulse function, the Laplace transform of the impulse function is 1. So these are the three basic signals in which we are going to discuss about the unit slip signal, unit impulse signal, and the decaying exponential signal. And we will see, we, will, uh, we saw the Laplace transform of these three functions. So when we are discussing about the unit step signal, Laplace transform of 1 by s, when the decaying signal, exponential signal, that is 1 upon s plus a Laplace transform. And when we are discussing about the impulse signal, the Laplace transform is 1. So there are some basic signals. Here are some basic signals. That is impulse signal, step signal, ramp signal, exponential signal, sine signal, and cosine signal. These are the basic signals. So these basic signals, we have to remember the Laplace transform of these basic signals. Why we have to remember? We have to remember because when we are solving the Laplace transform questions, so in between the questions, this function came. In between intermediate step, these functions are came in between the questions. So we, when we remember the Laplace transform, so directly we are applying the Laplace transform of that function. No need to evaluate or equate the what is that Laplace transform of ut or del t or rt or anything. So basic signals we remember, we just apply the Laplace transform. So these are the basic signals. The first one is impulse signal. So impulse signal represents as del of t. And we see that what is the Laplace transform? That is 1. Next one is the unit step signal. It is represented as u of t. And we see the Laplace transform as 1 upon s. Similar, the next one is unit ramp signal. So unit ramp signal is represented as r of t. And r of t is nothing but the t u of t. So ramp signal is similar as triangular signal. So this is represented as t u of t. So the Laplace transform of the ramp signal is 1 upon s squared. Similarly, when we are discussing exponential signal, so e to the power minus st, at, that is the decaying exponential. And we will see that is what will be the Laplace transform? 1 upon s plus a. Similarly, sine and cosine signals are there, sine omega t and cos omega t. The Laplace transform for sine omega t is omega upon s square plus omega square. 
Similarly, for plus omega t, as upon s square plus omega t. So these are the basic signals and their Laplace terms. So we have to remember it. So the next signal is damped ramp signal. Damped ramp. Ramp signal, we understand that e to the power minus a t. Is, it is still talking about ramp signal. So t e to the power minus a t. So when we are finding the Laplace transform here, we are applying the property of the Laplace transform. So here, what will be the property? It is multiplied by t. So here, we are applying the property as differentiation in the S domain property. When we are applying that property, we are getting the Laplace transform as 1 upon S plus A whole square. Similarly, damped sine. So e to the power minus a t denote the damped. And this is sine signal, so sine omega t. So when we are finding the Laplace transform, it is getting omega upon S plus A whole square plus omega A square. Similarly, damped cosine. So e to the power minus a t cos omega t. When we are finding the Laplace, so it is getting S plus A upon S plus A whole square plus omega S square. So next one, we will see, next one, the basic signals. And what is the basic signals? We already discussed that the first signal is a step function, unit step function. So the symbol for the unit step function is KUT. It is defined as KUT. So UT is your unit step function. I'm telling you that for the unit step signal, how it is defined? For t greater than or equals to 0, it is 1. For t less than 0, it is 0. But it is what where it is k u t. So say it is multiplied by k. So when t is greater than 0, u t is 1 and 1 is multiplied with k. So we are getting k. When t is less than 0, what is the value of u t? 0. So 0 into k, we are, we are getting 0. So k u t is defined for t greater than 0, this is k. For t less than 0, this is 0. So Graphical, this is the graphical representation of KUT. So I already tell you when T is less than 0, the UT is 0. So 0 into K, this is 0. When T greater than 0, the UT value is 1. And 1 into K is K. So from 0 time T, 0 to infinity, the value of KUT is K. Similar step functions. So what we are going to do when we are seeing these functions, this graphical representation. So for before time t equals to 0, what is the value? This is 0. After at t equals to 0, when we see at t equals to 0, so it is getting 0. At t equals to 0, there is one jump from 0 to k. There is a jump from 0 to k. So at t equals to 0, one discontinuity is there. So we will see here, one discontinuity is there. So what I am going to tell you that discontinuity of the step function may occur at Sometimes other than t equals to 0. So here we are taking that u of t signal. So discontinuity will occur at t equals to 0. He is telling that this discontinuity will be occur at some different time instant. Yeah, definitely it will happen. How? When we are applying the shifting properties. When we are applying the shifting properties on the signal, then that discontinuity time instant will be different. As we see that we are taking the signal k u t minus a. K u t minus a. It means the initial signal k u t. Now we are writing k u t minus a. So we are shifting the k u t signal by a unit. This is minus a. So we are going to delay the signal. We are delaying signal means we are going to right shift the signal. So it means we are going to shift the signal by a unit. In which direction? In which right direction. In right shift. So when we are going to define it, the what is the time instant? The time instant is now compared with a. So t is greater than a, it is k. When t is less than a, it is 0. So when we are defining a, a graphical representation, so we will see the graphical representation as what is the time instant? Now the time instant is a. So before a, the value of k u t minus a is 0. After a, what will be the value? After a, it is getting k. So from a to infinity, when time from a to infinity, the value of k u t minus a is k. So this is the graphical representations. So this is the graphical representation. So next, what we are going to take, the next we are going to take the some triangular signals. Here is some triangular signals is there. So what is the time instant? Time instant is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we will see from 0 to 1. From 0 to 1, one line is there. Okay, from 0 to 1, one line is there. From 1 to 3, one line is there also. From 1 to 3, one line is there. Again, from 3 to 4, one line is there. So there are three line equations will be there. With first line equation between 0 to 1. Second line equation from 1 to 3. 
and third line equation from 3 to 4. So we will get three line equations. So three linear equations at t equals to 0, t equals to 1, t equals to 3, and t equals to 4. This is the time instant. Their slope getting changes. And we are getting the line equation. So here we will see from 0 to 1. When we are taking from 0 to 1, this line, what is the line equations? Line equations is 2t. How we find the line equations? So a straight line equation, we understand that y equals to mx plus c. That is the line equations of the straight line. What is m? m is the slope. How we find the slope? So slope we are going to find is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x. So this is the formula to finding the slope. So from that, we are getting from this line 0 to 1. How much the line equation is 2t. Similarly, from 1 to 3, from 1 to 3, this line. What is the line equations? We are getting minus 2t plus 4. Similar from 3 to 4, when we are getting 3 to 4 line, we are getting the line equation as 2t minus 8. So, three line equation we are getting. What next? What we are going to do? So, linear functions, three linear functions are there. First line equation 2t, second one is minus 2t plus 4, third one is 2t minus 8. So, the first line is starting from 0 and the slope change at t equals to 1. So, at t equals to 0, it is getting on. So, you will see that 2t signal, 2t line is on at t equals to 0 and off at t equals to 1. Similarly, second line is from 1 to 3. So, it is on at t equals to 1 and off at t equals to 3. Third line is starting from 3 to 4. So, range between 3 to 4. So, it is on at t equals to 3 and off as t equals to 4. So, this is the line equations and where it is getting on and off, we will see here. So, a step function can be used to turn on and turn off this function. The step function can be used as turn on and turn off. As a switch, we can use. So, when we are defining that uh, rectangular signal, that rect uh, sorry, triangular signal is there. So, when we are defining that triangular signal in unit step function, if somebody tell me that uh, triangular signal is given and you have to define that triangular signal in the form of unit step signals. So, how we find? So, first line equation is 2t and that is between 0 and 1. So time instant is 0 and second time instant is 1. So first time instant is 0, so we are writing ut minus second time instant is 1, so u of t minus 1. Similarly, plus second line equation is minus 2t plus 4. So it is between 1 and 3. So u of t minus 1 minus u of t minus 3. Similar third line equation is 2t minus 8 and it is between 3 and 4. So 2t minus 8, u of t minus 3 minus u of t minus 4. So that triangular signal can be represented in the form of unit step signals. So this is the representation of triangular in the form of unit step signal. So next one, impulse function. So impulse function, what I am going to tell you, the impulse function symbol is del of t. This del of t is representation of the impulse function. So mathematical, what is the property of impulse function? So first property is the this one, minus infinite to infinite del t del t dt equals to 1. So this property is known as the area property of impulse. So when we are going to integrate from of any signal, when we are going to integrate any signal from minus infinite to infinite, it means we are going to find the area of that function. So this is, we are going to find the area of the impulse signals and the area of the impulse signals is 1. So it is also known as the area property of the impulse function. Second, we are already tell you that impulse function is only defined at t equals to 0. If we are taking any value except t equals to 0, the value of impulse is 0. So it is given as del t equals to 0 if t is not equals to 0. So this is two property of the impulse function. So the area under the impulse function is constant. So we will see that uh, what is the impulse function? The area of impulse is 1. That is the constant. So area under the impulse function is constant. And this represents the strength of the impulse. And it will show you that what is the strength of that impulse. So impulse is zero everywhere except t equals to zero. So I already tell you that impulse is all only defined at t equals to zero. So any impulse that occur at t equals to a, if some impulse, I'm going to tell you that uh, one impulse signal is there, or what is the time instant? That is the time instant is t equals to a. Then it is defined as k del t minus a. We are going to shift that del signal del t signal by a unit and new time instant getting t equals to a. So when graphical, we are going to see that this is defined at t equals to 0. So this is k del t. 
it is defined at p equals to a at time instant a it is going to define so it is written as k del t minus a it is going to the del t signal is shifted by a so this is the k del t minus a. this is the graphical representation of the impulse signal so some properties of the impulse laplace transform are there so some properties the first property we are going to discuss about the linearity property what is the linearity property so linearity property we are going to define in the manner if we are taking two signals f1t and f2t so f1t signal the laplace transform of f1t is f1s and f2t laplace transform is f2s so when we are f1t and f2t signals are there laplace transform is f1s and f2s when we are taking the laplace transform of a1 f1t plus a2 f2t then the laplace transform is given as a1 into f1s plus a2 into f2s so this is the linearity property and the linearity property defined by how we tell that this is linear function or linear system so for the linear system two property two things are verified the first one homogeneity principle and second one is the superposition principle so if two is verified then we tell that the system is linear system so this is the linearity property of the laplace transform the next one is the scaling property so once the, the signal we are going to take as f of t laplace transform is f of s now we are going to scale that f of t signal by a so this a is the scaling factor so new signal what we are going to take f of at now we are going to take the laplace transform of f of at so it is given as 1 upon a f of s by a. so this is the scaling property of the laplace transform similarly third one is the time shift in the time domain time domain shifting property so shifting property when we are going to tell then laplace transform of ft is f of s now we are going to shift this time t by a unit so now we are going to take the signal as f of t minus a u of t minus a. so we are going to shift the signal by a unit so the laplace transform is e to the power minus as into fs this a is same as the shifting unit how much shift we are going to provide this a and this a both are same so the shifting property when we are going to see so it is getting e to the power minus as into f of s so next one inverse laplace transform so inverse laplace transform what is inverse laplace transform so first of all we have to discuss laplace transform so laplace transform we see that this is the transform from time domain to the complex frequency domain that is the s domain so when we are taking the inverse laplace transform so it is the transform from complex frequency domain that is our s domain to the time domain so it is f of s is given as ns upon ds ns is the numerator polynomial and ds is the denominator polynomial so any function is defined as numerator by denominator polynomials so the main functions then we are discussing about the inverse laplace transform the main method of the inverse laplace solving the inverse laplace transform is partial fraction method so we are using partial fraction method we are finding the inverse laplace transform so some examples we are going to take the first signal first example we are going to take that f of s equals to 3 by s minus 5 upon s plus a plus 6 upon s square plus 4 so when we see this signal first term 3 by s so 1 by s is there so when we are taking the inverse laplace transform so we already know that the laplace transform of ut is 1 by s so one what will be the inverse laplace transform of 1 by s it will give you the ut so first signal this is nothing but your 3 ut 3 into u of t second signal 5 upon s plus a so we already saw that 1 upon s plus a whose laplace transform is 1 upon s plus a that is e to the power minus at ut when we are discussing about the laplace transform e to the e to the power minus at ut we will see the laplace transform is 1 upon s plus a so here it is 1 upon s plus 1 so what is the value of a a value is 1 so we are getting 5 e to the power minus t ut so for the second function inverse laplace is 5 e to the power minus t ut third one is 6 upon s square plus 4 so whose laplace transform is we will see the laplace transform of sin and cosine so for both the denominator is s square plus omega square and numerator is omega upon s square plus omega square it is comparable with, comparable with omega upon s square plus omega square so this is the inverse laplace of sin function and this is omega what is the omega omega is 2 because in denominator we are writing s square plus omega square so omega square is 4 so omega is 
so it is nothing but sin of 2t sin of 2t so when we are taking the inverse laplace so it is given as 3 ut minus 5 e to the power minus t ut plus 3 sin 2t ut so for all the three signals ut is common so we are taking it outside so 3 minus 5 e to the power minus t plus 3 sin 2t into ut so this is the inverse laplace transform so next question when we are going to i am telling already tell you that the main functions when we are solving the inverse laplace transform the main method is the partial fraction method so one question is there f of s is 96 into s plus 5 s plus 12 divided by s s plus 8 s plus 6 so one f of s is there so now we are going to find the inverse laplace transform so what we are going to do we are solving using partial fraction method so when we are solving using partial fraction method so in that we have to find first number of poles where is the pole location for this signal where is the pole so we already know that pole what is pole pole is the roots of the denominator so denominator part is this one s into s plus a s plus 6 this is the denominator part so what is the root s equal to 0 s equal to minus 8 s equal to minus 6 so we are getting s1 is 0 s2 is minus 8 s3 minus 6 so three pole we are getting so what so all three poles are distinct so what we are going to write is as so we are going to write it as 96 into s plus 4 s plus 12 s into s plus 8 s plus 6 can be written as k1 upon s k2 upon s plus 8 and k3 upon s plus 6 so what is now what we are going to tell it so if we are going to split it into three polynomials k1 upon s k2 upon s plus 8 and k3 upon s plus 6 so here we are going to find k1 k2 and k3 so what is the what we are going to do is now we are going to find the value of k1 k2 and k3 so what is the denominator of k1 s so where is the pole location s equal to 0 so for finding k1 we are going to find that s equal to 0 similarly for k2 what is the denominator s plus 8 so k2 will be defined at where s equal to minus 8 similarly k3 will be defined at where s equal to minus 6 so three Points three poles we are getting zero minus eight minus six. So at three points we are going to define and finding k one k two and k three. How we find it? So for finding k one, this is the polynomial is given ninety six s plus five s plus twelve and this one at s equal to zero. So k one plus k two s upon s plus eight at s equal to zero plus k three s upon s plus six at s equal to zero. When we are putting s equal to zero, so for when we are putting s equal to zero, so second term and third term. K two and K three, it is getting cancelled out because it is getting zero. So from here we are getting K one. So K one, how much we are getting from in this expression? We are putting s equal to zero. So how much we are getting? Ninety six into five into twelve divided by eight into six. After solving, how much we are getting? One twenty. So K one we are getting one twenty. Similarly for K two, where it is defined? It is it will define at s equal to minus eight. So this is the expression at s equal to minus eight. K1 into s plus 8 upon s plus 6 at s equal to minus 8 plus K2 plus K3 expression is here K3 into s plus 8 s into s plus 8 where it is going to define at s equal to minus 8 when we are putting s equal to minus 8 so this first term K1 expression K1 getting zero and similarly K3 getting zero so minus 8 when we are going to put so numerator getting zero so these both are cancel out so from here we are getting K2. K2 value how much we are getting 96 into this one expression we are putting s equal to minus 8 so we are getting 96 into minus 8 plus 5 is minus 3 minus 8 plus 12 is 4 divided by in numerator minus 8 into minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2 so after solving we are getting minus 72 so K3 we are K2 we are getting minus 72 similarly for K3 so K3 will be defined as s equal to minus 6 so in expression we are going to find we are going to put the value of s equals to minus 6 So this K1 K2 cancel out. So here K3 we are getting how much? So 96 at 96 into minus 6 plus 5, it is getting minus 1. And S plus 12, S value is minus 6, so it is getting 6 divided by minus 6 into 2. So K3 we are value we are getting 48. So K1 K2 K3 we got. So f of s is 1 by 120 by s minus 72 by s plus 8 plus 48 upon s plus 6. So when we are going to see it, so this is one by s. So inverse Laplace transform is u t here one upon s plus a. So it will be function of e to the power minus a t u t. Similarly, third function one upon s plus a e to the power minus a t u t. 
So then we are taking the inverse Laplace f of p is given as 120 u of p minus 72 e to the power minus 80. What is the value of a? This one. So e to the power minus 80 ut plus 48 e to the power minus 80. What is the value of a? 6. So e to the power minus 60 ut. So ut is common in all the three expressions. So we are taking ut as common from all the three expressions. So we are getting the inverse Laplace as 120 minus 72 e to the power minus 80, 48 e to the power minus 60 ut. So this is your inverse Laplace. So in this session, we know how to find the Laplace transform. What is the Laplace transform for the basic signal? What are the property of the Laplace transform? And how we find the inverse Laplace transform? So this is all about this session. Thank you.